take a long time to decorate cakes, but it doesn't always have to. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks, easy ways of decorating a beautiful cake. I'm Lisa Strauss and we're mixing it up in the kitchen today. Whenever we're covering cakes, we always try our best to make each layer perfectly covered with fondant and leave a flawless edge. But every once in a while we're in a rush or it doesn't come out as perfect as you want. So an easy way of joining the tiers together and creating a unified look is just by piping little dots. What you could do is just make some royal icing and here I have some in a disposable bag and I used a number two tip and I'm just going to pipe little a little border of dots and it looks almost like a strand of pearls. Now I'm going to make some polka dots, which are super easy. You really don't need any extra tools except a pastry tip or two that you probably already have at home. Here I'm using an 806 tip because I like the size of this. Of course, if I wanted really big dots, I could use the back or I could use smaller tips to create little dots. You have a ton of variety. Now I've already rolled out my gum paste and I'm just going to use the tip to cut out the polka dots. So I'll start on one end and I place it at a nice distance. So now I'm going to rotate it exactly right across the way. And again, I'm going to put two. So once you have them at, let's say 12 o'clock and six o'clock, then you can start to apply them at three o'clock and nine o'clock. So right in the middle, I line up my two points on this side and I'll put one here, one at the bottom, and then to the other side. Then once you have those, they're almost like your cornerstones, you could take some more polka dots and fill in the gaps. And so there's a simple pattern of polka dots. You can make it as complex or even simpler if you want. And you could do it with royal icing, fondant, or gum paste. So here I have rolled out three different colors. I have a white and two shades of pink. And so again, what was so nice about the fonderific pre-dyed colors, here's the pink, right? So it starts out super intense which is beautiful for all those princess cakes that I have to do. And then I like to mix it with some gum paste. And so I'll just add a little bit of white. If I want a darker color, I'll add some red into it. And that way I get a lot of different shades. So another simple way of decorating a cake and covering a lot of ground in a little bit of time are stripes. So what I do is I roll out sheets of whatever colors I want. I create a straight edge at the top. And then of course I always love my trusty scalpel and I'm just making marks. So here I'm marking off half inch stripes and here are some half inch stripes and then I have quarter inch stripes and then just little slivers. And I'm going to apply these onto my cake in kind of a random pattern. So I just wanna line it with the top edge of the cake and then I'm going to cut it at the bottom so again, I just wanna show you a whole bunch of quick tips. So I'm going to do this quickly and just do a portion of it because there's so much more I wanna show you. So now I'm going to apply my white ones right over my, my larger pink ones. Now I can go back in with my royal icing and add some dimension with some dots. Another easy design that looks really beautiful and professional is quilting, and it's pretty easy to do. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take the tape measure and you wanna mark out intervals. Here I'm doing inch, one inch intervals. And then you wanna do the same thing down below. You could use a ruler or if you have the triangle, just a little mark. So then what I wanna do is take my triangle and I wanna line up my dots, but I wanna line them up one off. I know this makes no sense until you see it. So what you wanna do is if there are two dots in line, you wanna line up the furthest one, the first one, let's say here, and you want it to go to the one over. And you can even, if it makes it easier, make a line with your triangle. And then the next line, you just wanna be parallel to the one you started. So I go from one line and then you follow all the intervals. So you're just going one past 
your original line. And then we're gonna go in the other way, the other direction as well. So now I'll grab my stitching tool and I'll just go right back over those lines. And you can grab this kind of uh, veining tool I like to use, and you can go into the little areas and make divots like where pearls would go. You don't even have to do this, but again, it's just another detail for where the quilting's going. And then what you can do is go in, and I have a bag now with a number three tip, so it's a little larger opening, and I could create my own pearl. So I've just continued the pattern, and so see what a difference it makes? And one of the great things about this fondant from Fonderific is that I can emboss it this way and that it has a lot of give. So that's one of the reasons I like to use it for things like sculpted cakes and wedding cakes that have unique designs. So far, all the designs I've shown you have been kind of regimented. We'll use a ruler or a special tool, a triangle. Uh, so now I'm going to show you something that's a little bit more organic. I use it for flowers and leaves. You can even make butterflies or waves. It's brush embroidery. And it's kind of a form of painting, but using edible icing. And so here's one that I've already done. It's kind of just a generic flower with two kinds of leaves. I'm just going to start by making petal shapes. And you'll see I let the royal icing build up because that's what's going to give me all the brush strokes that make this such a beautiful design. Then I'm going to use a fairly stiff brush because I want it to be able to pull the icing dipped in a little bit of egg white. And so I'm pulling the icing to the center, but I'm not going all the way on the outside edge. I'm kind of working right at the top of the royal icing. And the more brush strokes you get, the more beautiful it will be because that's the point, that it's supposed to be a very um, whimsical kind of design, very light and airy. And so you don't even need to finish the shape, right? You could just make all these kind of arcs and then come back in and you really are pulling the icing to make that shape. Then I like to create a little bit of dimension with just some uh, little dots in the center. You can also create stems. And then I'll have the leaf come off of the stem. Just like before, I can do just one side and allow the paintbrush and the egg whites to pull the shape. You can create a beautiful design with brush embroidery all over your cake and do nothing more. As long as you have a dark background and white royal icing, I think it looks gorgeous. But you can add another dimension with luster dust. So here I had some brush embroidery that I painted about an hour ago, so it's nice and dry. And I'm going to mix some lemon extract with luster dust. You could go in and just highlight some areas or you could paint the exact all over the design. So for this, I usually use a mix of a big brush and then a small brush. And you can mix and match, right? You can do one color for the flowers, like say I use a, pe a pink petal dust, and then for the leaves, you can use a green petal dust. The important thing to remember though is to make sure it's dry. It's completely dry, otherwise it'll crack into the royal icing. And so just make sure you're working with a light hand, because remember, you're working on a real edible cake. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I gave you a lot of different options to decorate a cake from easy things like polka dots and stripes to more involved things like quilting and even brush embroidery. I'd love to hear from you, so please let me know what you think of the videos and anything else you'd like to learn. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any videos. I'm Elisa Strauss and we're mixing it up in the kitchen today.